Hello everyone, I'm Tony Richardson with TutExpert.com and today I'm going to show you how to use and implement masks. Now you may have heard of vector mask, layer mask, and just mask in general. They're all the same. They basically hide and reveal information in that layer. Now I'm using Photoshop CS6. You do not need Photoshop to do this. GIMP, uh, if you go to GIMP.org, you can download, I think the latest version is 2.8 of that. And it's powerful and it does have layer mask and you can follow right along. Also, just about any other software, CorelDRAW, Xara, um, Illustrator, those have vector mask, but they're still the same. Basically, when you have your image, if you would apply, uh, if you would apply a mask, and I'll show you right here, uh, if the mask has white in it, you can see everything. If it has black in it, which I'll paint black in here, it hides that information. So if I were to fill the image entirely with black, it hides the whole image. If I were to delete that layer mask, the image is still there. So it doesn't destroy the image. It doesn't even edit or alter the image. It just allows you to see things in that image or hide things. Now, how can that be of use? I'll show you. I'll duplicate this image and I will add a layer mask to this top one. Now, I'm gonna get creative. I'm going to grab a gradient and I'm going to make sure I'm in my layer mask because if I paint on the image, I will destroy it. So make sure I'm in the layer mask and I will draw a gradient, which looks like it didn't affect anything. But if we shut this layer off, you can see it's hidden the bottom part and revealed the top. Now, what's neat about that is I'll click on the image and I'll go to image adjustments. Now, I would never do this, but I'm just showing you so that you can get an idea of what it does. So I have darkened the image. Now, it looks like I've only darkened the top part, but that's not really true. It, when I unlink these, now unlinking doesn't take away the layer mask, it just means I can move it around. So when I move it around, as you see, I'll pull it right off, the whole image is dark. Um, but when I put the layer mask back on, I'm saying show me the layer underneath. And so basically this layer mask is only letting me see half or so of this top layer. Now. I, like I said, would never use a curves adjustment for, or for something like that, but I would go to filter, blur, and apply a Gaussian blur. And I'm about, uh, about five here is good, four and a half, four, eight. Um, basically, it's a blur that gives me a depth of field look. So that's a really cool look. Now, some of the flowers got affected here. That's easily rem remedied. Just click on your layer mask. Grab your paintbrush tool and start painting away. Um, just make sure that you're painting black because black, once again, I, this takes some getting used to. Black uh, is revealing the layer, not not in the same layer, but the layer underneath, or it's hiding that layer mask. So by painting black, I'm hiding the Gaussian blur, but revealing the layer underneath. Um, so that's really cool too. Now, let's say you wanted, uh, let's say you went too far and you got his hand right there and it's a lot clearer than the others. Um, and then you said, well, I'll go paint it white. Well, now it's too blurry. Well, you have the option of painting gray, which would be just kind of in the middle, which would be a little more realistic with the image. Or maybe, maybe you want to put a little gray here because you don't want it to look unrealistic. So you can kind of fade from gray to totally dark, um, which as you see on your layer mask, goes from black to gray to white. And when I say dark, I mean, you know, uh, white, which would be uh, the actual revealing of the Gaussian blur. Let me show you another method. I've gone through and I've pre-selected these flowers and, and the sash here and of course the necklace, everything that has a little pop of color. So I used my selection tool and I started selecting and then if you uh, hold down control or command as you're clicking on that layer um, and control or command J, click on it, um, I'm sorry, control or command J while it's selected, it will, dupl it will copy that to its own layer. So anything you select, if I were to select this red flower here and hold down control or command J, it will select that red flower and put it on its own layer. So 
That's why I like to do that. And then I labeled it selection, as you can see here. And I'll show you why. Because I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. And I did that by going here. You can also go to layers, new adjustment layer, and hue and saturation. Uh, I'm going to take the saturation all the way down, just totally right out. So saturation is the color information. I took it right out. I'm going to have my selection. I'm going to, uh, I just use, uh, I just hit control or command while I click on that. I'm in my layer mask and I'm going to edit fill with black. Now by doing that, I have hidden that part of the hue and saturation uh, adjustment layer. So I'm going to double click on this and let's say I wanted to uh, start from scratch. I have a full color image and something maybe a little more realistic would be something like that just so I can add a little pop of color. So this might be something more for a client um, although you can take it right out if you want to get really creative. Uh, now by doing that if you notice the brightness just kind of is taken right out of the image. I mean there's really this uh, beautiful stunning color here and the brightness is gone but you can add an adjustment layer like uh, curves. Um, you can do the same thing. Click controller command, click on the selection, go to the mask and fill it with black. Now that part of the image will not be affected so when you double click this curves adjustment right here and you start to brighten it up you're not brightening up those flowers. If you see, everything gets brightened but that. So what's nice is this is where it was. You can just add a little bit of brightness in there. And, and now what you've done is you've desaturated the color, but you've added the brightness back in. So it's a little bit like the original image, which is this, uh, as far as the balance is concerned. However, you've really drawn the eye to these flowers in this stunning silk sash and necklace. So just uh, another artistic way to edit this image. Now I'm going to show you a method of combining filters, um, all kinds of different things. I'll just show you. I've duplicated this image. I have pre-selected the couple so they are on their own layer. Um, and what I'll do, I'll actually put the uh, background copy on top and I will add a hue and saturation. I'll take the color right out again. Uh, I'm going to control click or command click on the couple while I'm on that layer. I'm going to do the same thing. Edit fill with black so I'm not affecting that part of the image. I'll deselect it so I can make sure I see what I'm working with. Now one thing I, I think would be like I said a little more realistic is maybe just taking the color out so that it kind of not not all the way uh, gray but just bring some more focus to this subject right here and we'll pull it down maybe 60 ish now what we can do is we can duplicate this couple bring them to the top and then I'll show you a really amazing filter there's something called Topaz Labs you can go online, look up Topaz Labs, and they have several products, but one of them that I love is Topaz Adjust. And as you see, it has all kinds of correction presets over here. You have an exposure correction, uh, a photo pop, you can have maybe just a mild color pop. Now, one thing I like, you can get dramatic, which is this one right here, or you can get really what they call psychedelic, which is really a lot, or you can just do a little portrait um, drama. So that's what we'll go with. Just something subtle. So let's say I was doing this for a client. I could do something like that. Duplicate the layer. Set the blending mode to something like overlay to where I really get a pop of color but pull down the opacity if it's in the 60s or mid 50s. And then I get this right here. So let me show you. This is the original image right here. This is maybe something that was taken with a um, a professional camera and you get great color but maybe you want to draw some attention to the photo by desaturating the background and just getting some wonderful effects on the foreground here so I'll, I'll show you the original that's the original 
and that's the edit. And we did this by using masks and a few uh, filter, just a filter and a wonderful um, blending mode. I love overlay uh, with stuff like this. So uh, if you if you're on the site, go ahead and check out um, some of the articles and go ahead and go to freebies download a, a few things and if you're on youtube go ahead and check out another video and get you some knowledge